All right, this is a primary vitrectomy for retinal detachment repair. You know, I don't use this as often as, say, a buccal vitrectomy, but in the right instances, it works quite well. Here I'm using my canial and trocar to kind of help twist the eye so I can get the canial and trocar in the other proper position. I think a real key for this is when starting out, if you have a bullous mobile retinal detachment like we have here superiorly, always start your vitrectomy over that attached retina that is away from your bullous detachment. You can remove at least half of the vitreous by starting over that attached retina, if not more, and you don't have the risk of causing a retinal break or uh, a tear or incarcerating the retina in your cutter. My tear was up superior here, and I'm shaving over it. I like to utilize low aspiration, high cut rates with this dual blade cutter. Uh, and you can see I'm actually also guarding my cutter with my light pipe. I have my light pipe right next to my cutter. In case that retina wants to jump up, it's going to hopefully hit my light pipe before it hits the retina and gets bitten by the, uh, or gets hit bitten by the vitrector. I get in the sweet spot. The sweet spot's where you can cut over a break and fluid will egress out from underneath your retina. And I find that this happens a surprising number of times and makes the case just a little bit easier. Fluid will accumulate. You Please keep in mind your retina is still bullous and can still be incarcerated within the, um, within the cutter there. So you want to basically take care to... Um, just use those low aspiration rates. But once that retina is a little more flat, now we're actually able to uh, cut a little more vigorously uh, peripherally here. And, uh, and I'm actually going to drain over this break using my cutter. I'm going to put some diathermy around the break. Diathermy is critical because it takes care of any bleeding vessels, but it also allows you to see in case that lens goes bad during the air fluid exchange. Now, I have my cutter over my break here, and I like this when there's a lot of vitreous still present to go ahead and instead of draining with a soft tip to drain with my cutter. Because any vitreous then that's going to get incarcerated into my cutter, uh, like it would your soft tip, will actually um, just cut right out. And then I, it also allows me to do a little vitrectomy under air. So I'm actually draining and shaving down over that anterior aspect of my tear right now. And if I see any additional vitreous, I'll go ahead and remove it. Now I've gone back to soft tip and uh, I'm going to complete my air fluid exchange. This was a superior macula splitting retinal detachment. So there's some subretinal fluid that's left. And when you fill that eye with air, that subretinal fluid is going to migrate posteriorly. And I don't love how much is left. So I create a draining retinotomy. And I keep try to create my draining retinotomy as nasal and as superior as I can. And fortunately, it's right in line with where my primary break is. Now I'm going to my soft tip and I'm going to drain through that draining retinotomy. And I do it really slow. That's the key to getting the retina completely reattached and not having persistent subretinal fluid. Really roll that eye towards your drain site and very slowly aspirate that fluid through your drain site with a soft tip cannula. Removing any residual fluid over the optic nerve. And since my retina is flat around my draining retinotomy, I'm going to laser it first. Um, that tends to be one of the areas that reaccumulates fluid the quickest. If it was detached still, I would go ahead and work peripherally and then go back and drain some more and laser it at the end. But in this case, it was completely attached. Now you'll notice my light changed here. That's because I'm depressing and utilizing the Alcon 25 gauge illuminated directional laser probe. I really like this laser probe. Uh, and in this patient, actually, I'm going to go ahead and laser 360. I don't always laser 360 when I'm doing a primary vitrectomy for retinal detachment repair, but this patient had multiple breaks superiorly, so I'm going to laser 360 sparing the posterior ciliary nerves, so I try to avoid those. And I try to laser really where the vitreous uh, inserts, and I try to put a couple laser po spots posterior and one or two anterior to that vitreous insertion. And we'll go around 360 degrees. And then once again, I'm going to do a gas air exchange. I like to use SF6. SF6 gives me a reliable two and a half to three week gas bubble. And for a superior retinal detachment, that usually gets the job done. Thanks for watching.